Well, again, everyone, welcome. I'm Michael Anos in for Vinny Politan. This is America Behind Bars. Millions of Americans are living in prisons, and an ex-gang member tells us how he got there. But first, this. We'll look at Chicago's multi-generational gangs and what one family is doing to change things. Then, all this week, HLN is going behind bars for an in-depth look at what life is like for Americans in the prison system. You'll meet an ex-gang member who uses jail time to turn his life around. With this culture and this lifestyle, your life is on the line every day. Every day. It's, it's like a form of suicide. His life of crime and violence caught up to him, and he ended up serving more than 10 years in prison. His story of redemption is just one of many in our week-long series, America Behind Bars. Prison system in our America Behind Bars series here on Now in America, we're focusing on people who have successfully made the transition from prison life to life on the outside. We start with the story of an ex-gang member who went from robbery and kidnapping to offering young people a path away from his once violent lifestyle. Hi, I'm Art Powell. I'm a former gang member. With this culture and this lifestyle, your life is on the line every day. Every day. It's, it's like a form of suicide. The name of the gang was, um, I refuse posse. Um, and I was probably the third in command. I took care of all of our, our enemies' confrontations. Mainly, you know, I was called when there were issues with our rivals or with people that were, that were, that, that were looking to cause disruption to what we were trying to build. I was involved in numerous aggravated assaults where I shot people. Um, terrorist threat because I threatened people. I told them I was going to kill them and I made an attempt on their life. Um, kidnapping, um, armed robbery. So I was responsible for um, younger guys that were under me, you know, providing them with drugs, providing them with weapons, you know, okay, for enemies. I wanted to spend all my time with them. I actually started spending more time with them than I did my family. Okay, I grew up in uh, the Adamsville area of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. It's the Mar Martin Luther King District. When I first got into gangs at the age of 15, my mother, um, she was very abusive, more emotionally than mentally, um, sometimes physically. Um, and I, I, got, I, I got to a place in my life I really didn't want to be around my mother. Had no memory of my dad. I wanted to belong to something that made me feel like it loved me or it cared about me. And that's what my homeboys did for me. My life was I refuse. I made I refuse my life every day. Yeah, I was actually at a point in my life where I was at a man's mercy. He pulled a gun on me and he pistol whooped me. I had nightmares about that situation because he could have easily killed me. From that point on, I carried a weapon with me everywhere everywhere I went. And you know, I had got so paranoid. When I, even when I was in my home, I was carrying a weapon. I had a, a gun on me. I had an option to live a normal life. Um, I had a job. I just, I had an issue with people telling me what to do. And that is just the beginning of Art Powell's story, his life of crime and violence. Now, tomorrow you'll hear more of his life behind bars and how he went from inmate to life skills coach. And there's more. Well, coming up, an ex-gang member's life of crime and violence finally caught up to him. He ended up serving more than 10 years in prison. It was, you know, seeing people get stabbed and hearing people get raped and all the things that was going on every day. Um, it was a challenge because you know, I never knew if somebody was going to try me. Next, you're going to hear how he used his jail time to turn his life around. An inspiring story is just one of many in our week-long series, America Behind Bars.
All this week, HLN is taking an in-depth look at what life is like for Americans in the prison system. In our American Behind Bars series, here and now in America, we're focusing on people who have successfully made the transition from prison life to life on the outside. Yesterday, we met an ex-gang member, Art Powell, who joined a gang at 15 years old and whose criminal life eventually got him locked up. Hi, I'm Art Powell. I'm a former gang member. With this culture and this lifestyle, your life is on the line every day. Every day. It's, it's like a form of suicide. I dated, I went out on dates with women, went to restaurants, but I was so paranoid, you know, because I had did so much dirt that, you know, I, I couldn't enjoy them. I couldn't be comfortable in those environments. Without, when I was in a restaurant, I always wanted to face the door so I could see who was coming in. And I'm looking at the exits, you know, trying to see if it's set up. If I'm, if I'm in the movies, I always want to sit all the way in the back so I can see who was coming in and trying to see if I can identify whether somebody was a friend or foe. Most people look at, you know, like TV, and, you know, movies, and they see, they see the, the part that's celebrated. And I think that's why there's no fear with our younger generation of why they, why they join, why they're so quick to join games, because they don't understand the consequences or they don't see the consequences behind their lifestyle. I went to prison because I was in a shootout with the Roswell Police Department. Um, robbery went bad, and we were engaged in a shootout with them, so I, I was convicted of um, armed robbery, aggravated assault on a police officer, and kidnapping. I, I, you know, I was told that you know my homeboys loved me, they told me they loved me, and they were gonna be there for me and do all these different things for me, you know, provide me with guns and weapons, but they didn't tell me that you know, once I get incarcerated, don't call my phone. I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna come and get you out of jail. I'm not gonna come see you. I'm not gonna write you. We're gonna disconnect from each other. Every day, I say my first eight years was a, 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 a issue of, of wondering if somebody was gonna come and kill me just because I was from Atlanta. It was, you know, seeing people get stabbed and hearing people get raped and all the things that was going on every day. It was real uncomfortable, and it was, you know, and then dealing with, you know, correctional officers that didn't like me or they treated me like I was nothing, like I was a slave. I had basically made my mind up when I knew I was going to do a lot of time that I wasn't going to come out the same guy that I was when I went in. I went through the, the transition of, uh, you know, getting my education, studying sociology and psychology. I got some counseling because I had a lot of issues. Um, that I had suppressed and put in the back of my head. And I knew that ultimately, you know, I had something to look forward to. I had a son and he needed me. I didn't want him to feel abandoned like I felt abandoned about my father. I just stayed focused because I knew I had something better planned um, once I got out of that environment. I wouldn't be the man that I am today if I had went through what I went through. I wouldn't be able to be a person to help young people the way I've been helping them today if I hadn't went through what I went through in my life. I facilitate programs with young people to teach, to deprogram them, to get them out of mindset of being involved in gangs and show them that there's an alternative path. The same hustle and grind they apply to, you know, being a criminal in the streets, they can apply that to being entrepreneurs and, and basically becoming successful. I can help them address those issues and give them tools to deal with those issues and just try and encourage them and be a model to show them that they can come out of that situation because I did.